Hello everyone, my name is Terry Vincent and I'm the Data Center Instructor at Micronics Training. I've been exploring and building some classes dealing around cloud, SDN, and network function virtualization and I've had many students asking me about how I'm building my topology, how I'm building my lab. So I thought what I would do is I would create a video series that's going to show you how to download and deploy some of the most basic utilities that you can use to be able to test out things like software-defined networking. Now, what this is going to translate to is, is that we're going to end up needing a couple of tools. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a utility called VirtualBox. Now, it's located at virtualbox.org, and what we're going to do is we're going to need this software in order to allow us to be able to create a virtual environment. Now, what I'm going to do in this first lab is I'm going to create an environment whereby we're going to have one VM, and that VM is going to host as many projects as possible out of the OpenStack ecosystem. Now, this is going to give us the capability of being able to create virtual machines. It's going to give us the capability of being able to play around with some controllers. And it's also going to give us the capability of being able to generate some APIs, application programmable interfaces, that will allow us to be able to dump things like Python commands into this VM and have it actually instantiate devices, whether it's going to be a compute module, i.e. a virtual machine, or it's going to be something like a network function virtualization component, say for instance a router or a layer 2 switch is really irrelevant as long as we have a way of being able to test and lab so that we can actually push the envelope on this and ensure that we're learning the technology. I don't know about you, but if I don't have the capability of being able to lab, I really don't feel like I have an understanding of just reading the theory. So what we're going to do is I'm going to download VirtualBox. Now that means I'm going to click on this VirtualBox 5.1 option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my operating system. Now I'm a, a Microsoft, I'm sorry, I am a Apple user, so I'm going to select the OS X hosts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that software. Now, that's not all we need. We have a virtual machine. Now what I need to do is I need to get an operating system that's going to allow me to be able to boot up the virtual machine once we build it. Now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an operating system called CentOS. CentOS is a fork of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux distribution. Now it's free, there is no service contract with it. It does stay possibly maybe one iteration behind as far as development, but for us and our purposes it's going to be a perfect operating system for us to deploy. In fact, I'm going to grab the smallest footprint possible Again, trying to reduce the amount of overhead that we're going to be adding to this virtual machine that we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up another tab here, and I'm going to go to centos.org, and I'm going to hit enter. And what we're going to do here is we're going to find ourselves on their splash page. And on that splash page, I have the option of Get Cent OS. So I'm going to click that. And like I said, I'm going to download the minimal version. So I'm going to download the minimal ISO. I'll pick a location close to me. Uh, let's see. We have um, New York. I'll just grab one out of New York. And now I have that utility being downloaded or that operating system. Now, the cool part about this is, is that I want to be able to create the VM. Now, I've already downloaded these files, so they're sitting in my download folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the VirtualBox installation, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to point it to the ISO file of the CentOS, which is going to be CentOS version 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a virtual machine, and then what we'll do is we'll install all of the operating software and all of the components that are going to allow us to create this labbing environment. Now let me warn you, that means that we're going to have some long breaks between recordings. So rather than drag you through that process, what I'll do is I'll stop the recording, and then what I'll do is I'll come back when a particular installation or download feature has been accomplished. As an example, it's going to take a long, long time for us to first patch the CentOS operating system that we're going to download, and it's also going to take us a long time to actually bring up a functional OpenStack environment. It's take about 25 minutes just for that process to take place. So I said it's easy, it's free, but it does take time. 
So one of the things that we want to do now is dive right in and see if we can't get this thing built. So first, what I'm going to do is going to install VirtualBox. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my downloads or to my, file, my folders. And what I'm going to do is I am going to select VirtualBox, which is this one right here. I'll simply double click it. And it should take me through the installation process which is relatively straightforward. Basically, we're going to answer the affirmative to any questions that get posed to us. And we'll see how it goes through. It's going to check my volumes, mount, finish. And then what I'm going to do is I'll drag this over so everyone can see it. And all I'll do is I'll double click this icon right here called the virtualbox.package. It'll go through the installation process. Let me make sure there's, there should be a little tag open up here. So it's verifying the VirtualBox package itself. And it should be pretty much done. So one way to tell would be to go to the applications window in my Mac. I'll go ahead and hit cancel here. And oh, oh it hasn't finished installing. So the package will, uh, will run the program to determine. Yep, my apologies. So, like I said, we're basically going to answer the affirmative. So, continue, install. I'll need to log into my system. It'll go through, write the files, and accomplish the install. Now, while this is going on, let's talk for a minute. Like I said, we need an operating system, and CentOS is basically like founded on Red Hat Enterprise. Now, I know a lot of people are really big in Ubuntu right now. I love Ubuntu, but when it comes to trying to get a stable server platform, I'll always go to an established provider like Red Hat simply because I can get a lot of assistance and a lot of help from individuals that are more familiar with than I am. Than I, am. I am not a Linux guru for a long time ago. I was really big into Linux and was trying to learn it, but when I dove feet first into data center and route switch enterprise with Cisco, kind of backed off of it. So I'm in a position right now where I'm having to basically relearn a lot of things. Now, what we've got accomplished here is, is we've done the installation. What we want to do is we want to build that environment. In other words, we're going to create a virtual machine. Now, this virtual machine is not going to have a lot of stuff associated with it. So what I'm going to do is I'll move the original download file to the trash. And what I'll do is I'll open up VirtualBox. So I'll come up here and say VirtualBox. And we should be able to fire up the software itself. Just waiting for it to come up. And you guys see my screen. Let me go ahead and adjust this a little bit so that we have all the same viewing range. Now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Now, you'll notice up here in the, the top left-hand corner, I'm going to have new. I'll click new. And what we'll do is I'll walk us through this process. We're going to create the CentOS machine. I'm going to give it 8 gigs of RAM. I'm going to give it a 40 gigabit hard drive. And I'm going to have to make some modifications to the network card because I plan on running VMs inside of a VM, a process referred to as nested virtualization. But more importantly, for the purposes of sending data, we're going to be tromboning or hairpinning traffic. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to make certain that the interface is going to be operating in what's referred to as promiscuous mode. So I don't want the system to freak out when it looks and sees that packets are coming from itself and things along those lines. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and disable that process by making everything supported in what we refer to again as promiscuous mode. So Right now, you'll notice it defaulted to a Windows machine, Windows 7. Now, one of the cool things I like about VirtualBox is if I come in here and say CentOS as the operating or the name, notice it immediately changed it to Linux, and it's going to give me this Red Hat version at 64-bit. Now, I'm just going to tack on the TAC Open Stack. What I'll do is I'll hit Continue. Now, I need to give it some memory. I said I was going to give it about 8 gigs, so I'll just drag this over. Uh, set out. No, actually, I can't give it 8. 8 is my full memory. Let's give it 6. So a little bit over 6,000. So hit Continue. I am going to create a virtual hard disk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install CentOS on that hard disk. So I'll hit Create. And go ahead and just use the default VirtualBox disk image. 
instead of trying to emulate like a VMDK or a VHD from Microsoft or VMware. And I'm going to allow the space to be dynamically allocated. Now, what that translates to is, is that I'm going to be setting aside 20 to 40 gigs. I haven't really decided yet. I may flip as a, when I actually get to that point. But that means that if I were to basically make that fixed scale, every bit of that memory would immediately be taken away from my hard drive and made available to this virtual machine. And I may never need all of that space. So it's always nice to use this idea of dynamically allocated, which means as I need space, I'll actually take the space that I need up to the size of the hard drive that I've created or specified. So I'll go ahead and hit continue here. And what's going to end up happening now is it's going to ask me about RAM, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, memory space. So what I, I said, I'll, let's go ahead, I'll just do 20 gigs. Anything over 10 should be fine for this set of labs. And then I'm going to hit create. And what you're going to see is, is we're going to see the virtual machine. You can see it behind me. It actually came up. It's, it's been created. It's not been instantiated yet because we haven't started it, but all of the configurational details are here. Now I said I was going to make one more change and that's going to be to the network card. And I'm also going to make certain that it obtains an IP address. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use DHCP on my network. And I do this, especially if I'm doing an installation on a laptop. Right now, this is on my production Mac Mini. But if I do it on a laptop and I move from point A to point B, and I want to have an IP address that's going to allow me to get to the outside world, what I do is I just pull an IP address from the DHCP server via my wireless interface. And what that does is that allows me to be able to get an address wherever I go and still have internet reachability without having to do any kind of natting or anything. So that's what we're going to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the uh, CentOS OpenStack and I'm going to right click and hit settings. And this is going to take me to a window and what I want to do is I'm going to focus on network. Now under network you'll notice I have enable network adapter and it's natting. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to actually connect to the physical interface that I want to use to attach to the outside world. And that's a process referred to as bridging to that adapter. And what you'll see here is, is notice it came up with a default of my wireless interface. Now that's what I'm using to generate this lab. Should I wanted to use, say for instance, a physical ethernet or a Thunderbolt connection, I could. But this happens to be the interface that I want to use. Now, what about that idea of promiscuous mode? Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit advanced and you'll see here promiscuous mode is in a state of deny. If I hit the menu here and it's going to say allow all, now what's going to end up happening is, is there won't be any type of oversight impacting data that's being generated from or returning to or hairpinning through the network interface card that I have associated with this VM. So I'm going to hit OK and it will apply. So now the only thing that I need to do is point it to that operating system that we downloaded. I'm going to right click, go to settings. I will go to storage. And what you'll see here is we have a controller and I have a CD-ROM that I can highlight here. And notice if I go over here to the right side, there is a little image of the disk. If I click this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to point it to the CentOS that I downloaded. Now, I've already tested this out to make sure everything worked before I go in and do the video. So you may not see your list here. All you'll end up doing is just click choose virtual system and then you'll select it out of your folders. So once that's done, we should be good to go. I hit OK. And now the only thing left is to start up the virtual machine. Now once the virtual machine is started, it's going to go through its booting process. And you can see here it's going to bring us to the installation window. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the installation up to a point and then as it starts move, transferring and adding files, what we'll end up doing is we'll return and then we'll start looking at building the software that we're going to be running on this virtual machine. So let me blow this up and I will, let's see, I think I can drag it over. So when it does go live, it should come up to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say install sent OS. I'm not worried about audio capture or any of that stuff. And it's going to go through and it's going to do its installation. And if this takes too long, what I'll end up doing is I'll edit it out. And let me 
change the screen size a little bit so that everything fits. And now what we want to do is walk through this installation. Well, the language that I'm going to use is English. Let me see if I can drag this over so I don't have to do quite so much. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is when you click on this screen, it's going to grab your mouse. And notice it's trapped. I can't move over. So what you'll end up wanting to do is, is if you'll notice down here on the bottom right-hand corner, you can't see it. Let me, let me fix it. On the bottom right-hand corner, you will see it says left, and it's going to have the Apple command symbol for me. So that's what I press to get my mouse out of these confines. So just understand that that's going to be an option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select English. Excuse me. I'm going to select English. And if I scroll down, we're going to have an option to continue. I'll click continue. And now it's presenting me with an entire series of options for configuration. Well, I'm going to do date and time first. Now notice it says NTP, network time protocol, is off by default. And it's telling me that my time zone is New York. That's where I want to be. But I do want to ultimately have NTP running. Now, the reason that NTP is not running is, is the fact that we have not configured an interface yet. So I'm going to go to Done. And I'll scroll down to Installation Destination. That's going to be where I want to install the software that I'm pointing to. And you'll notice here I have networking. Let's deal with the networking first. Notice it said Disconnected. Why? Because the virtual interface is off. I'm going to turn it on. And it should grab an IP address off of my router. And I should be pretty much good to go there. So if I go ahead and hit Done, now the networking should work. And if I scroll back up to date and time, a way to check this is, is it should now have automatically turned network time on. So it's actually running in TP. Next question is going to be basically, where do I want to install the software? Well, I want to put it on that 20 gig hard drive I made. So all I'll do here is select that and hit Done. And what it'll do is it'll start going through the installation and uh, let's see, actually, I need to hit begin install. Now it'll begin the installation. And now all I need to do is I need to configure my users. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a root password for my root access. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a very simple password. I'm going to say open stack. Repeat it, open stack. Now notice it says that this is a weak password. And this is kind of confusing. You can use a weak password. I mean, this is a lab, so I'm not really worried about making it too, too protected. But if you hit done, notice it doesn't seem to do anything. Well, that's because the password is weak. It really wants you to say, yes, I want to use it. So what will end up happening is anytime we have a weak password, we'll have to hit done twice. Notice it took it and applied. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a user that I can use to log in. Uh, I'll say my name is Terry Vinson, and my user name will be T Vinson, and I'll give it a password of OpenStack. And hit done, but I'll have to hit it a second time simply because it was a weak password. And now what you're going to notice is, is it should go through and or begin the installation process. Well, it's actually been starting the installation process while we were building out these users. Now this is going to take some time for this to complete. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take the opportunity here to pause the video and when the video, I'll return to the video when the installation is complete. All right. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to SSH to this machine once that takes place and that way we'll be able to use the command line and we won't have to deal with this uh, hitting the left command button and things like that to be able to interact with the system. So I'll see you guys then, at which time we'll explore the running operating system.